AUKUS has often been defined by nuclear submarines and strategic deterrence, but the surface dimension of this alliance is quietly reshaping the maritime balance of power. Both the United Kingdom and Australia are entering a new era of naval modernization, one centered on flexibility, survivability, and interoperability. The evolution of Britain's Type 83 destroyer and Australia's hunter-class frigate programs illustrates how the two nations are aligning their fleets for a shared Indo-Pacific future. The Royal Navy's modernization roadmap is now well underway. The Type 26 anti-submarine warfare frigate, designed and built by BAE Systems, has become the backbone of Britain's next-generation escort fleet. HMS Glasgow, the lead ship, has completed fitting out and is preparing for sea trials, while HMS Cardiff and HMS Belfast are advancing through construction. Alongside the Type 31 Inspiration class frigate is entering service at an unprecedented pace. HMS Venturer was launched in spring 2025, marking a milestone in the Royal Navy's strategy to rebuild mass without sacrificing modernity. Yet London's ambitions extend further the Type 83 destroyer, now in early design stages, is envisioned to replace the aging Type 45 class by the late 2030s. It will integrate advanced sensors, cooperative engagement networks, and directed energy weapons like the Dragonfire laser to defend against ballistic and hypersonic threats, transforming Britain's surface fleet into a system of systems. Across the globe, Canberra faces similar challenges but from a different starting point. The Surface Fleet Review 2024 reshaped Australia's naval modernization plan, trimming the hunter-class order from nine to about six vessels, while introducing a new category of general-purpose frigates, smaller, cheaper, and faster to build. The reasoning is pragmatic. Australia needs more ships sooner. While the hunter remains a sophisticated derivative of the Type 26 design, delays, costs, and workforce constraints pushed Canberra to pursue an additional frigate program to prevent a capability gap before 2035. This twin-track approach mirrors Britain's philosophy, a few high-end combatants supported by a larger number of cost-effective escorts to ensure persistent presence and strategic flexibility. In practical terms, the Hunter and Type 26 are siblings separated by geography. Both emphasize quietness, advanced sonar arrays, and long-range ASW operations. The Hunter integrates Australia's indigenous CFR-2 active phased array radar and the Aegis Combat Management System, giving it superior situational awareness and missile defense coordination. Each ship features 32 Mark 41 vertical launch cells capable of hosting ESSM Block II and SM-2 missiles, along with space for future strike options. The Type 26, in turn, uses the Sea Scepter missile system and is designed for global ASU operations with the Royal Navy's carrier groups. Together, they represent a modular architecture that can evolve through the AUKUS framework, sharing components, data standards, and training pipelines. If the Hunter and Type 26 form the core, the Type 31 and Australia's GP frigate are their outer layers. Britain's Type 31, derived from the Arrowhead 140 design, prioritizes simplicity, affordability, and rapid production. It offers credible air defense and patrol capabilities, ideal for protecting sea lanes and conducting presence operations. Australia's forthcoming GP frigate program, expected to select a proven international design, will serve the same purpose. Fill the numbers, patrol vast maritime approaches, and free high-end vessels for deterrence missions. This layered approach reflects a broader shift across Western navies, resilience through quantity and deterrence through quality. The Type 83 destroyer stands at the conceptual summit of this architecture. It is not merely a successor to the Type 45, it is the foundation of Britain's next integrated air and missile defense network. Building upon lessons from Sea Viper Evolution and Dragonfire, Type 83 aims to field multi-spectrum sensors, high-energy weapons, and the computing power for collaborative engagement with allied assets. 
in a future AUKUS task group, Type 83 could act as the high-tier shield, coordinating missile defense for both Royal Navy and Royal Australian Navy formations, while hunters and Type 26 frigates hunt submarines and project ASW coverage outward. This concept, a distributed fleet of interoperable assets, is exactly what AUKUS envisions. Industrial cooperation forms the other half of the equation. Britain's shipyards at Govan, Roseth, and Barrow and Furness are entering their busiest decade since the Cold War. In Australia, Osborne Shipyard near Adelaide has been transformed into a continuous shipbuilding hub. The AUKUS framework is beginning to connect these nodes through shared supply chains, common systems like the Mark 41 VLS, and collaborative engineering programs. Exchange of engineers and digital design data between the UK and Australia is already under discussion. Such cooperation is not merely symbolic. It reduces duplication, standardizes logistics, and embeds a shared industrial base across hemispheres. The modernization, however, is not without risks. Escalating costs, labor shortages, and inflation threaten timelines on both sides. Britain must maintain its existing Type 45 destroyers well into the 2030s while financing Type 83 development, a fiscal balancing act. Australia's dual-path strategy could strain budgets and shipyard capacity, and both face the perennial challenge of integrating rapidly evolving technologies, from lasers and hypersonic interceptors to AI-driven combat systems, into platforms that must serve for decades. Yet these are strategic risks worth taking. A failure to modernize now would leave both navies overextended and underarmed in an increasingly contested Indo-Pacific. By 2030, AUKUS could field a coherent, multinational task group in the Pacific. A Royal Navy carrier strike group, screened by Type 26s and Type 45s, could operate alongside Australian hunters and GP frigates, sharing radar tracks and missile defense data through Aegis and Sea East networks. By 2035, with the arrival of Type 83 and Dragonfire, this formation might evolve into a layered integrated air and missile defense network, capable of intercepting advanced threats at multiple altitudes and ranges. Beyond symbolism, it would embody an operational reality. Britain providing strategic depth and technological expertise, Australia offering forward presence and regional reach. The broader impact extends beyond the two nations. For the Indo-Pacific, a revitalized Royal Navy and a rebalanced Royal Australian Navy signal that AUKUS is maturing from a treaty into a tangible maritime architecture. It reshapes defense industrial dependencies, builds resilience across allied supply chains, and reinforces deterrence without escalating confrontation. For Britain, the Type 83 represents its determination to remain a global maritime power, even after Brexit. For Australia, the Hunter and GP frigate mix ensures it can sustain patrols, deterrence, and partnership operations across one of the world's largest maritime domains. Ultimately, the Type 83 and Hunter class programs are more than procurement lists. They are the embodiment of two democracies reinventing their sea power for the 21st century. Together, they transform AUKUS from an undersea pact into a truly multi-dimensional alliance, one that operates above and below the waves, powered by shared technology, mutual trust, and strategic necessity. The surface fleet is where Britain's experience meets Australia's geography. It is the front line of a new maritime order where deterrence, cooperation, and industrial strength converge.